Currently, the situation is because of the low PC penetration and low broadband and internet penetration. The major uh, population in the rural and semi-urban areas is still not having the reach to the ICT. So the demand from their side to get ICT uh, in Indian languages is not yet there. But because of the e-governance initiatives, now there is a general feeling that we need to provide Indian language support on each and every platform. So our agenda is very long and we, we are very far away and we have just got started in our initiatives for last um, 10 years we have made some effective progress and I feel that uh, you know a lot more uh, involvement from the state governments is required which still needs to be mobilized so that a larger penetration uh, of the technology can take place. And uh, the government is trying to put up the 20 mission mode projects under e-governance and uh, citizen service centers are being set up uh, at the village level. So eight villages uh, have access to one CSC. So the ICT penetration will increase because of the CSCs, uh, because as and when uh, the people are start accessing the e-governance services in the local language, so the access to CSC uh, will make them you know, access the technology. They may not afford uh, the PCs or laptops individually. So the community level access will become available. All these, already the cyber cafes in the cities have become very common and uh, the children today uh, uh, access all the information online for admissions, for uh, applications and everything. So the penetration is increasing. The Indian language efforts, the government is paying more and more attention, more and more funds are being granted. But there is a lack of scientists in the country to work in this area because there is no, uh, you know, people like to work in more in the latest areas like nanotechnology or the globally the areas which are more, uh, you know, forward looking in the research uh, side, uh, people like to work in those areas. So computer scientists, uh, out of passion, uh, a large group of scientists is working in this area with us and is receiving funding from us and we are seeding more and more institutions through the consortia projects. As far as languages are concerned, there are 11 languages which are majorly in use. So out of that, that mostly eight to nine languages are covered in most of the projects. So for the lesser uh, resource languages, we are trying to build corporas. We are trying to start consortia under mentoring of uh, these, uh, you know, ICT people, the language and linguistic people are brought to work under their umbrella so that they can be provided uh, standards, tools, and uh, guiding principles to build those resources, now we are careful about the copyright issues. We are trying to produce copyright, uh, copy free, copyright free uh, corporas so that they can be utilized for research without any problem and can be distributed. So everybody can look up our data center, tdil-dc.in, where we have provided all these services and the resources and the tools. This uh, website was put up last November. Uh, because whatever research efforts had uh, taken place now have been consolidated and are being disseminated through this uh, website. So we have lots to do and lots to learn from the uh, you know, initiatives being taken in the Europe. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so it's good to learn from the outside that there are the, main pro the same problems plus uh, I would say internet penetration, which is a, an, an additional uh, issue for you. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, yes. If you can continue. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, perhaps I should just clarify my position. I'm not in government as such. I'm an academic, but we're part of a panel that advises government on human language technologies issues. Um, perhaps just to give some background, before 1994, uh, South Africa had two official languages, which was English and Afrikaans. And with the new political dispensation in 1994, uh, a new constitution was accepted, and which stated that there were 11 official languages. That is nine of the indigenous languages, or pure African languages, as well as English and Afrikaans. Now, Mr. Chair, the, the motivation for this, doing this, is purely acknowledging the cultural, uh, human, and linguistic rights of minority groups in a country, of the larger mi minority groups. And uh, in the perspective there, yes, you say 50 million, it's approximately, we're not quite sure, we're in the census now, uh, 48 to, to 50 million people. 
Uh, English and Afrikaans, English is only ranked fifth as a mother tongue in, in the country, although in business and industry it's used quite widely. Uh, Afrikaans is ranked third, and then we have larger groups which languages are mutually uh, understandable. Uh, the Nguni group, which consists of Zulu, <coughs> Zulu, Kosa, Swati, and Debele, and then the Sutu languages, which are cross-border languages with uh, Botswana at Lesotho, for instance. And then again, Venda and Tsonga, again, cross-border languages with Mozambique, for instance, and Zimbabwe to a certain extent. Um, I think that one point that one can make, given this constitution, and people feel very passionate very often uh, about their languages, and if the language is not used officially as it's supposed to be, uh, we've had court cases taking to uh, the, the government to the Constitutional Court to address these issues, and it's an ongoing process. Now, the language technologies, the drive for that, uh, as I've mentioned, is since 2000, there's been an academic drive, and I think to a large extent, it also comes from uh, the first LRAC conference, which was in Granada, and where these, uh, the necessity of really building corpora uh, for languages uh, was stressed. And I think the academics took this up to, to a very large extent. So in 2003, uh, government uh, set up a, 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 a national language policy framework was adopted by cabinet and specifically mention was made to language technology development. Um, and from that, a number of in infrastructures were uh, set up, the Pan-South African Language Board, then there's a national, uh, national language service, um, Furthermore, for each of the languages, national lexicographic units, uh, all supposed to develop the language in one way or the other. And then there was also uh, a group, well, uh, the participation also towards standardization in TC 37 of ISO. Uh, at this point in time, there are mainly two departments uh, that are involved in HLT development. Uh, and most appropriate, the one department, Department of Arts and Culture, looking at the languages, and the Department of Science Technology, looking at the technologies. Now, as far, and there's some cooperation, obviously, between the, the two departments. Uh, in Departments of, of Science Technology, there's been uh, 10 running projects, all from a technological nature. Uh, the resources, there's been a resource audit on tools and uh, and other resources which were uh, explained and presented at LREC 2010. As far as the arts and culture is concerned, a, uh, basically focusing on resource development, there's uh, specifically looking at text and speech and also multimodal uh, to follow. But remember, it's for, at this point in time, it's for 10 languages at a time, excluding English uh, for obvious reasons. Some machine translation uh, projects have been commissioned by government, also specifically in the governmental domain, so as to make, in terms of the constitution, to make available the uh, government uh, notices, etc., all in, in a particular language. Uh, we've now reached a point where, uh, apart from the resources that's being developed, uh, there's a resource management agency that's to be established this year still. Uh, the calls for proposals will be going out within the next month. And the whole idea is to manage this in a, shall I say, a small LRA type of, or LDC type of organization. We do hope to have good cooperation with European colleagues. We're spe specifically working or looking towards a cooperation with the Dutch Language Union. And, uh, and obviously the MetaNet and MetaShare would also very much be a good link that we could link into. I'm ending off by just mentioning a few uh, problems. Obviously limited resources, resource scarce languages, capacity building is a problem. We don't have the expertise as we should have. Again, looking at the funding for 10 languages. 
On a technical point, what we've experienced in terms of, of systems that's been developed, information systems, telephone-based systems uh, requiring speech recognition as well as text-to-speech, is the problem of a very frequent problem of code switching and code mixing. And it was mentioned here this morning as well. And that obviously puts some strain on these systems as such. The challenges and priorities seems to be machine translation as far as we can get. Uh, statistical uh, machine translation uh, projects are running at this point in time. And then also, as in India, mobile uh, applications. Uh, this is, as we see this as a future, South Africa is already oversubscribed. More than 100% of the community have uh, mobile phones and uh, specifically also bearing in mind that uh, there are quite low, in certain areas, low literacy level. Uh, it just stands to reason that one can use speech or you should use speech on your mobile phones uh, giving or text-to-speech systems embedded there to take up the, um, the, the challenge. Uh, I think there's one thing that we may have learned. Uh, it, we came in rather late in the process, but it was possible to learn from what has happened in other parts of the world specifically. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then... Uh, uh, I would suggest we go inward uh, to Catalonia and uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Xirinax. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, let me to introduce in a few words uh, Linguamon House of Languages. Uh, Linguamon was established uh, 2005 by the Catalan government and the Barcelona City Council to increase global awareness of the values of multilingualism. Uh, just to summarize it, I will tell you some words about Linguamon's work. We divide our work in three main areas of activity. Uh, two of them, they are far from this, uh, the activity of this meeting, but uh, the first one is the disseminating the universal values of languages. And this line of work encompasses our museum projects, exhibitions, cultural, cultural programs, as well as audiovisual productions. The second one is multilingualism and society. And this project involves how to manage different multilingualism realities. Uh, all the society has changed a lot. And just to give you an example, in 1995, uh, we were 6 million inhabitants. And now we are more than 7 million. And uh, the rate of the immigrants is the 16% of our population. Uh, 